set up up here. It's going to be hymn number 606. 606.
blessing for each one that's here today. Lord, we ask that you would bless them for being in your house. We pray, Father, that you'd seek the needs that they have in their hearts and supply those needs. Father, for those that are sick, we would ask that you would comfort them, Lord, in their infirmities, that you'd watch over them. And those that are traveling, Lord, that you'd keep them safe. We pray, Father, for all of those in Maui who have suffered such great loss that you would help them to uh, recover and to realize that you are able to see them through this tragedy. We pray, Father, that they look to you for the strength and the guidance that they need in these trying times. We ask you, Lord, for our country that you help our leaders to understand that the uh, you are in charge and that they need to look to you for directions. I pray now, Lord, that you guide us through this service, that all we do might glorify the name of Jesus, for we ask it in his name. Amen. You may be seated. Three. 
Very good. Bill and Barbara Ransinski. Okay, our next film will be our offertory, so please stand on the last verse again. It'll be hymn number 189, The Lily of the Valley. The Lily of the Valley.
probably going to be the majority of people at the great white throne judgment, okay? consequence 
to whichever option we take. We can take either way. Uh, now, you come to a point in your life where you have to make a decision going, oh, this road or this road? Well, this one looks a little narrow and kind of uh, might have a few bumps in it. But this one is a nice wide freeway. I can get on that and go places. And so we turn aside, people turn aside onto that freeway, and they find out that that freeway ends up in a swamp full of alligators because they went the way of the world and not the way of the Lord. God gives us options. He says, if you do my will, and if you follow me, I'll bless you. And if you don't do my will and go the way of the world, I'm not going to bless you, I'm going to curse you. It's, it's that simple. So we have an option to be a blessed or cursed. And God is not a God away off yonder somewhere that doesn't know how we are living. God is here, present, able to know our actions today. He allows us to make them, but He knows the decisions that we make. He knows which road we are going to travel on. He knows which one we, we choose. And He knows what the results of following that particular road is going to be. I can follow that narrow road that leads to eternity life, and it's going to have some bumps on it. It's going to have a few chug holes. It's going to have some uh, uh, dangerous corners probably in it. But it's going to lead eventually to eternal life. It's going to lead to happiness, joy, peace forevermore. So even though it's not as smooth as this broad highway over here looks like, it's still it's the best road to follow because it leads to the right places. Do you want to end up in that swamp full of alligators? Or do you want to end up in heaven where there's no sorrow or pain or anger or suffering anymore? I think that I'd rather have a few bumps here and have an eternity of peace, joy, and happiness than to have a nice smooth road here and end up in hell. I don't know about you, but that's my option. That's the way I feel about it. The psalmist, 145th Psalm, he talks about it, says in the 18th verse, he says, The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Truth. You really believe that God is able to hear and answer your prayer. You can't you call upon God. I hear people call on God all the time, but they don't really believe that there is a God. They don't. It's just a word to them. Uh, in so many places, it's uh, it's profanity rather than uh, uh, honor and blessings and uh, uh, humility. We call upon God for the wrong reasons in so many cases people do. But it says, God is near, right here with you if you trust him and call upon him and believe. For he says that the Lord preserveth all that love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. See there, we've got the two options. Those that love him, God will protect, God will cherish, God will take care of. And those that don't love God, God will destroy. It's Pretty simple, isn't it? So we have an option. We have an opportunity. We have a God that's right here with us right this moment. You know, Jesus said that I go to be with the Father, then I'll send the Comforter to be with you. The Holy Spirit is here in our presence right now. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Well, we got more than two or three here this morning. And God is here. His presence is here. And you have the option of accepting that presence and rejoicing in it or 
deciding that you don't want to do God's will because you've got better plans for your day than to serve God. It's up to you. God gives you that choice. What choice are you making today? Uh, all of you that are here made the choice today to come to church to follow God. That's wonderful. Now what are you going to do when you leave the church? Is it a, one, a once a week type of service to the Lord? Or are you going to be serving the Lord and following Him when you're outside of the church, out in the world? You see, the God is with you even when you're out in the world. He is watching over you and caring for you and leading you if you will follow Him whatever you do in the world. I don't know what your lifestyle is. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you do. But I know that God is able to, to uh, meet everything, uh, every need that you've got. I know that He's able to guide you in every step that you take. I know that He wants you to look to Him for the strength, the power, and the, the wisdom. I guess wisdom would be one of the things or the sense, common sense of the to do what God wants you to do. Uh, Isaiah 50, the seventh verse says, it says, For the Lord will help, therefore shall I not be astounded. The Lord will help me. You have that assurance that whatever you're doing, the Lord's going to help me because I'm walking in His will. I'm looking to Him. I know He's there with me. I know He's leading. Uh, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. So I'm not afraid of what the world can do. I know God is with me. I know that he's leading me. I know that if I'm following him, that I'm secure. I don't, for the moment, for the one minute, believe that I'm not going to have some bumps in that road. I know that that road is going to be rough because Jesus said, you're going to have trials in this world. You're going to have problems. You're going to face uh, some very uh, serious uh, decisions to make. You're going to have to choose sometimes between what you want to do and what God wants you to do. Sometimes you want to do something real bad. I mean, oh, it looks so good. But God says no. And you... God, I want to do this. But he said, no. It's not according to my will. Israel was that way. They always wanted to do their own thing. And God sent them into captivity. Uh, God is able to lead us in the right way. If we'll do his will, he will bless us. I have no doubts about God's ability and God's willingness to bless his people and he's right here to do it. He's available 24-7. He's better than uh, the EMS because he's there all the time. He's right with you. You don't have to call him and he'll come in 30 minutes or an hour. He's right here with you right this second. And if you call him on him right now, he'll hear you right now. He didn't say we wouldn't have pain and we wouldn't have suffering and we wouldn't have trials. But he said, I'll see you through everything that you've got to go through. I'll carry you through. Just trust me. I'll take care of you. Believe in me. Uh, believe my word. My word says, God's word says, I'll take care of you. I will bless you. I will see you through your problems. He didn't say he'd steer us around our problems. <laughs> And he said he'd be right there with us all the way through. That he'd never leave us or forsake us. My God is not a God afar off. 
He's not away up yonder and can't hear. He's right here and he knows. He knows your need right now. He knows what your problems are. He knows whether you're following his will or you're following your own. Uh, and you followed his will and came to church. You're in God's house. You're in his presence here. You are doing his will because you have come to worship. I pray that you've come to worship. You've come to praise the Lord. That's what we come to church for. One thing is to give God the glory, to praise Him, to let the world know which side we're on. You know, we're here in church, the world driving by, they say, look at all those stupid people. They could be fishing right now, and here they are in church, sitting around there listening to some dumb preacher. And yeah, preachers are dumb. All of us are. God is the only one that's smart. And he knows what's best for us. All I have is a messenger of the Lord. All I can do is tell you that thus saith the Lord. And he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm there for you. So trust him. Call on me. Let me uh, be your strength and your guidance. Let's look over the 55th chapter of Isaiah. I'm going to preach parable here today. I've already <coughs> used up my breath. Uh, verse 6 and 7 in the 55th chapter. He says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. You know, God is not always going to contend with man. There's going to come a time when God is going to call it, take his presence away from us. He's going to call his church home. He's going to take his people out of this world. He's going to be gone from here. And you are going to be left at the wiles of the devil. You're going to be here to face the devil if you don't have God, if you don't have Jesus, if you don't know him. So he says, don't put off salvation. Don't wait too long. You know, so many people say, well, I'm a young man. I've got lots of time. I'm just a teenager and I've got uh, 40 more years or 50 to make up my mind whether I want to be a Christian or follow God or whether I want to live and do my own thing. I'll just do my own thing now. And you may go out into eternity tomorrow doing your own thing and be eternally separated from God. It can happen. It happens all the time. People who put off salvation because the devil likes to tell you whether you've got plenty of time. You don't have to do anything right now. You don't have to make that decision now. You can eh, wait a day or two or a week or two or a year or two. Uh, uh, maybe you've got some things that you need to get straightened out before you come to the Lord. You know, your life's in a mess. You need to kind of straighten it out. You don't want to present that old, ugly, messed up life to the Lord. I, I don't want to make bring this mess to it. i got to get it straightened out first. God wants you just as you are. He wants you to come just the way you are, acknowledging that you can't straighten out that mess. You can't correct all of those mistakes you made. You can't undo all the sins you've committed. You need to bring them to Jesus and give them to Him and tell Him, Lord, I can't do anything with them. Here they are. I give them to you. I thank you for taking them. Please forgive me for all the things I've done, and I'm sorry I brought so much to you, but I know that you will take it and bring it to the Lord. He's here waiting for you to come. He wants you to be saved. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to end up in that swamp full of alligators. No way. He'd rather you take that narrow road and he'll walk right along with you all the way. He'll be with you and keep you safe and on the road. He won't let you fall. He won't let you slip. He won't let you have an accident or walk away. He'll keep you going. Even though the road may be rough and it may have some uh, sharp turns in it and some steep hills, God is going to be with you. Jesus said, I'll walk with you every step of the way. He has promised us that he'd never leave us. He promised us that he'd be with us. 
He's promised us that we are His and He is able to keep us. And that all we have to do is surrender our will to His and let Him be. Seek out the right way. Uh, seek the path that is correct. You know, the God says, says the, there's a path, way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Sometimes we think that our way is the best way. It's not. We need to be going God's way. We need to be going the way God is leading. We need to seek His will in our decisions. We need to do what God wants us to do. We need to know that He cares about us. And we need to know that He loves us. He doesn't want us to perish. He's done everything He can to give us an opportunity to escape the punishment of those that don't believe. We don't have to be there. We can accept Jesus right now and be saved. We can invite Christ into our hearts. We can acknowledge that we are guilty. Because we all are. We all know we are. We all know we've sinned. We all know we've done something wrong. And we need to know that as long as we have those sins in our lives, we are separated from God. We can't please God. But we can give all of those sins and all of that guilt to Jesus because He paid for it on the cross. He died just for that, that we might be forgiven, that we might have everlasting life. And He says, you need to bring all of your guilt and all of your sins and all of your sorrow to me and lay them at the cross and thank and repent of them and don't continue on them and can turn away from them. Stop doing these wicked things and start following me and I will bless you. I will forgive your sins. They'll be as if they had been, never been. And you will be perfect in the sight of God. And you will have a home eternal in the heavens if you follow me. <clears throat> Who are you following today? Yourself or the Lord? I don't know. Only you know how you're walking this morning. Only you know whether you have surrendered your will to the will of Jesus or whether you're walking path that you like to walk because it seems nice and smooth. It is probably for a while. It's got a lot of fun on it. Got a lot of fun on that other highway too. A lot of fun, a lot of pleasure, a lot of joy in serving the Lord. And the nice thing you can sleep peacefully at night. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow because God says, I'll take care of it. I've got it in hand. So seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let them return unto me unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon them. And you are God, for he will abundantly pardon. <coughs> We've all committed sin.